So I'll take you to the last part first. Uh, I decided, I don't know, probably back in COVID times, I was gonna build a uh, 32 frame and then put a Roadster body on it. I found the Roadster body, it's a Brookville. You can see it sitting back there. Um, all the way up in Wisconsin and I'm down in Tennessee for what I thought was a good price. And especially with everything that came with it. And then uh, you can see I got a video out about putting the, uh, the louver deck lid on the back, you know. Uh, so I got that done. I still got some fitment issues down at the bottom I gotta work out, but pretty minor stuff as far as I'm concerned. But this is where I'm at on it so far. So this is, uh, July of uh, 2024 and overall I'd say this is a really fun project of course I've got a lot of them going on at one time but here's where I am I got the frame uh, rails from ASC and you'll see that as we start from the beginning here in a few minutes I got the the boxing plates from uh, Wolf Metal Fabrication I think is the name of it a lot of stuff from Speedway, a lot of stuff from Roadster Supply. Uh, I really like the guys over at Roadster Supply. They, they, uh, they've they got great products and they know what they're doing. So uh, they're pretty easy to deal with. Speedway's kind of been hit or miss. Man, I, I went through like four or five, maybe four axles. You know, these chrome front axles where the kingpins the holes for them were misdrilled. And same thing on some of the, uh, on some of the steering uh, stuff, like the steering arms, my gosh. So uh, just, you know, I'm not saying blow them off, just be careful when you buy things, take a look at, at what they have. So I've got it boxed, I've got all the cross members in. Um, the center stuff is only taxed, uh, but I'm getting there and the reason is I want to I want to tack it all in. I plan on putting a quick change in the back of it, and then I want to take the body and I want to put it on here and make sure everything's kind of where it's supposed to be. Put an engine and trans, at least a mock-up for it in, and then uh, go on down the road with that. Uh, this is the most recent part I got. That was from RJ's. Uh, nice stuff. American made, hard to find anymore. And uh, I think I did the uh, measurement right for that. This bar right here is gonna have to be cut and angled somewhere back behind uh, where you see it right now because the, uh, well, it's just not gonna work like it is because the pedal is gonna be right in the way. The steering is uh, the Unisteer module uh, or unit, I should say, and I decided I was going to put the uh, Vega steering box mount on and then mount it to that. I didn't want to just weld the uh, unit steer mount onto the frame because then if I want to take it off, to me it's easier to drop the three bolts there than it is to take all the other accoutrements off, uh, goobery stuff. But uh, I think the shock mounts for Pete and Jake. Uh, that's Roadster Supply holding the spring on. I think it's a Posey's spring with uh, you know super slide type deal. And then uh, chrome as much as I can. I like the Curtis style hairpins that are straight. Uh, so that's where I am so far. And uh, I'll rewind to the first of the project because I wanted to make this something that you know, something like you would do in your garage, something every guy could do, rather than, you know, oh, I'm gonna make this whole jig and frame table and all those things that people do. And really, it was just to prove to myself that it doesn't have to be d that difficult. You know, if you're trying to do some fun hot rodding stuff, sometimes I think we've all gotten to the place where we overcomplicate everything and then it gets to be not fun and so expensive, nobody can do it. And I'm not saying any of this stuff is cheap. I mean, you know, set of tires these days, you're looking at three or 400 bucks, depending on what you buy. 
and then you know everything's a lot of money so you might have to do what i did in some cases and that is collect things uh slowly collect them as you go and uh you know there's always somewhere he's somebody who's got a project that just didn't work out and uh you can pick up some stuff for some pretty decent prices you know you don't want to be the guy who takes advantage of everybody's misfortune but um maybe you can help each other out so that'd be cool all right let's start at the beginning well i've been considering for a while how to uh make this happen all right so i have finally come to the conclusion that i am not a man who is going to make enough of these to build a full-up jig so i'm going to assemble uh, kind of a partial jig. Uh, oh, it's not going to be level. Oh, my gosh. You can't. Oh, oh. Uh. Well, here's how this is going to get done. So, I just had this shop built. You know, still paying notes on it. <clears throat> and I took a bunch of uh, levels off the floor, which you can do. And I am just going to build this thing on the floor. And how I'm going to do it is I'm gonna use, I think, four different cross members to set the thing up, level it, and get it going. Here's the first one. It's gonna be up in the front. So everything I saw said, uh, oh, was it 23 and five eighths or 23 and three quarters? I think it was 23 and three quarters. Uh, width at the front. <clears throat> which is what I'm gonna do. And no, I'm not pinching it, not, not planning on doing that. I got some other ideas. <clears throat> and this one's like uh, 40 rail to rail back here. And this one is like uh, 40 and a bit. And then this one is somewhere around, I don't know, it's probably around 42 or 40 also. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do. I just finished welding up the first cross member up there I showed you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mark two inches up off of the side of these angles here because the bottom of the rails are supposed to be two inches up. These middle ones are gonna be on the floor. And then <clears throat> there's a measurement that goes with the very back of it. It's two and a something. Um, so I'm gonna measure those. If I get really froggy, I might put some blocks in on that cross member right there, right at two, so the uh, fronts will just sit right on them. That would be very stable. And then use my level and uh, level up everything. You know, just put shims underneath each one. Make sure they're, you know, even and straight, side to side. And then, uh, that's how I'm going to build my frame. That's how I'm going to do it. Hide and watch. So you can probably see it's already starting to line up a little bit. So, uh, yeah, I was able to find some, uh, ooh, got a sneeze. <coughs> ah, bless me. Okay. I was able to find some two inch steel strap I had laying around. I measured it to make sure it's exactly two inches. Up. Do that louder. It's right on. So, uh, Made sure they were square and level and all that stuff. And then zipped them in on the bottom. And since they had to kind of stand off from the sides, yes, I just booger welded some stuff in there because I don't care. When I really need to weld, I can do it. Um, but that gets you to where your rails are two inches off the ground. So that is fantastic. And then... In the back here, yeah, it's 40 inches side, side to side. So I'll mark uh, 20 either side of my center line, which I have in there. I mean, you can see the markings, I guess. But I actually have them uh, scraped in there with an awl, so I'll have a really crisp, clear center line. And the reason for that is, like, on these back here, I'll take some of the same bar that I have. I think that's two by four or two by six. It's probably two by six. Anyway, whatever that is, 
and I will use my chop saw and chop me some posts for the sides, right? Just like in the front. And then I'll take those same tabs, except instead of uh, two inches, they've got to be up two and a quarter in the back. So I'll do that and then make tabs for each of the ones on the side. And then you're like, yeah, but it could still be all off. Yes, it could. So <clears throat> the center line is marked on everything. So I can take my laser and shoot a line right down the center of it and get everything all in proportions. Now, things I could do, uh, I could put feet on all these to make them adjustable. I just am not convinced that would be necessary at this point. Uh, you know, if I get to the point where I, I can't get it to level, yeah, I'll do that. So I would flip all these crossbars over um, drill a hole, put a nut on it, use some all thread and another nut on the bottom of it. And then, uh, that would make that adjustable, which would be spiffy neato. But how about we do one at a time and, and see if, if we can make that happen. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to do that. Uh, next time I'm out here, uh, got some cool stuff like those, uh, boxing plates. They got the holes in them, which... It's really going to be a pain in the rear trying to get it painted. I think I have a plan for that, but uh, we'll see. And a whole bunch of other stuff. I got the unit steer for the front. It's all chrome. <clears throat> going to be fantastic. Just not soon, right? Got time to do things. And then I, uh, yeah, there's my deck lid. Still looking pretty good. I still got some issues to work down at the bottom of here. Got the handle all put on. Just lovely like it's supposed to be. Um, for me, I'm just gonna make my handle go up uh, for race mode. <laughs> and then when you wanna open it, it's gonna be a little to the side like that. That's, uh, that's how I wanna do it, so take that. The fronts, the backs, done. You can see I got, uh, Bunch of bottles well, but there's a piece of strap steel right there. Two to quarter inches up. Same thing on this side in the back. Here. That's better, right? When I take my time, I can do some okay work. So, uh, yeah, that's what it looks like so far. And then I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do on the center cross members. Keep everything straight. Pull strings, measure everything. Start fitting parts. Yes. You ever have trust issues? Yeah, me too. So, <clears throat> strangely, some of the blueprints I've seen put the center line at 14 and 7 16 Some put them at 14 and 5 16 And that's measured lengthwise along the top of the frame rail, like not with the curve. It's got to be straight front to back. So I'm about to tack this. <clears throat> I'm going to tack it at 14 and 7 16 If, uh, well, if that's wrong, it's going to be a problem with it. Bubbles level like that. Well, I welded it, tacked it, and then I unwelded it because uh, I don't have my third cross member right in or a third part of the jig ish in here right now. Um, but what? Help me! Don't kill me. Uh, what I did is I set my laser level up down there. And then we're shooting the center line all the way down here. Um, and then you can see where I have center of the axle marked. All right. So shooting the line across there to make sure everything was straight. <coughs> and then got back, put this one in, and uh, marked the center line of the axles. And then uh, made this uh, second jig plate here. 
And I got that strap on there because it was a little off. So I went through and squared it. Uh, that's just to hold it. The rails have a little bit of memory, just like metal always does when you bend it. Um, and then when I looked at it, that front cross member is just a tiny bit off. I didn't like it. Uh, so I just broke the tacks loose and then re-tacked it. And now everything lines up. If I turn the uh, laser on, you might not be able to see it. I don't know. But what you would see is the laser line runs right through the center of that hole. And if you take enough time to put the horizontal part of the laser, laser on there, then you'd see that too. It would be right on it. And then difficult probably to see my uh, center line. No, you can see the center line pretty good, can't you? All right. I'll back off just a little bit. But the center line is marked right there, so the laser traces right up it. <clears throat> uh, anyway, so that's got uh, got potential. You know, that's what I've gotten done so far. Some of it's just to prove that I can do it while it's sitting on the floor and come out with a good product. Just doing one, man. Just doing one. If you uh, are all fired up about you know, going out and making a full jig. Get after it, bros. Do it your way! Okay, I know what you're thinking, <clears throat> but please let us not criticize each other in this time of our sorrow and grief. Yeah, it is up on a pair of sawhorses. They're uh, very well built. They're very level. They're very stable. <laughs> Believe it or not, everything's on center line. Uh, everything is level. You know... Some people just won't freaking believe you unless you sew them everything. Let's go up to the front. <clears throat> so what I'm doing here is, since I already got the uh, that's easily within the bubble. I guess I could come up a little bit on this side. About there. Not much though. The uh, front cross member is burned in. Um, I started putting on these uh, boxing plates. You can see what that's going to look like when it gets done. <clears throat> it doesn't look ugly when you're actually putting them on there before you grind all the welds down. And yes, those of you who can weld perfectly, just please do it that way. Uh, everything's centered up with a laser. I mean, you can tell looking at where the laser line is on that versus that one over there. Um, if you can see it, that they're, they're running in the same place. So what I'm telling you is don't freak out about how the setup is. It's a one-time thing. You can do it any way you want to do it. Um, so do it that way. Anyway, the next thing to do is start putting in the other cross members to hold the frame can tack them in real well and then put them on the floor, level it all out, out again before you burn them in. Or if you like where it is, you can burn them in right here. Um, it's okay. Uh, so this is the Speedway kit. Uh, your results may vary. You may like it. You may not. Whatever. Do whatever you want to do. But that's where I am on this. It's not as bad as you think. Um, there's more than one way to do stuff. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna have to cut a little bit of a divot out of it. I did notice this. When I started measuring the full length of this thing, um, those legs over there are about uh, a sixteenth of an inch longer than the end of these legs over here. So I had to compensate by measuring a little bit more of a divot over there. The top seems to fit in pretty good. The bottom is a little bit tighter. So I'll need to make sure my... Uh, my rails are uh, good top to bottom, um, but shouldn't be much of an issue. Uh, make it fit, burn it in. That's what we're going to do. All right, so where are we in this uh, deal today? Uh, front cross member welded in. Center cross member, yeah, that's burned in. Um, 
still trying to freak people out with it just being up on, you know, not having a completely stable movement free jig. Oh my gosh. How will we ever do it? Uh, you measure a lot. That's how you do it. And then you go back and you level a lot and then you keep everything where you can get to it to check it over and over again. Uh, center cross member, or I'm sorry, the front cross member there, I, I checked the, uh, angle on it uh with the top of the frame rose level it's got about uh, 8.6 degrees of caster so that ought to be good you can see i'm tacking in <coughs> the pieces and parts on that side as far as the boxing plates and uh i got the boxing plates from wolf metal fab if anybody's interested uh, real nice stuff uh i'm happy with it you're gonna have some gaps and that kind of thing hey man nothing's perfect all right so uh just get on with it mm, let's see so the rear's clamped in over there and when i uh set those up you can see that at the back here there's a gap between where the center boxing plate and the rear boxing plate is going to go and the front's going to have you know somewhat of a gap you need a little gap to weld and then the other thing is I'm gonna ha have to space it ar around this uh, center cross member, which I think is gonna be a pain in the rear. So what did I do for that? I went ahead and cut the thing, um, and then I will have to fit fab and weld around that. And once I get them all where they need to go and tack them all in, um, then I'll start burning in the edges and then uh, polishing them down to make them look like like that you know so that's uh that's what i'm doing today and i'll let you know how far i get you can see where i cut that one so it's on the from the well the front's up at the back over there but from the front one two three four the fifth hole about the middle of that hole is where i'm trying to cut and uh hopefully that'll work out we'll see here we are on the inside of the frame rail forward of the center cross member uh that that works for me. I don't know if uh, if you're happy with it, but dang, you'll be able to do it better on yours, right? Um, down here, so I had to cut off a little bit at an angle on the top to get it to fit, and then use that piece to insert where it was a little wide at the bottom. You know how math works with polygons and stuff, right? Uh, and then just tacked it in. So there's going to be one kind of oblong hole right there. Um, yep, going to have to deal with it, man. Um, there's just going to be a little bit of extra space right there. And I don't care. Still looks cool. And it's definitely going to look cool all the way to the front. If you're under here poking around, maybe I'll just jam my finger in your eye. How's that? Uh, I'm feeling saucy. I'm feeling saucy today. And then if we can get the back part uh, going the right direction, uh, all will be well. All right, here we go. I'm not completely unhappy with the way that turned out. I mean, like I said, I knew it was going to be kind of an oblong. Uh, what can I tell you? I guess you could, I guess you could space all your boxing plates out better than I did, um, and then just weld the center cross member to the boxing plates and trim it. I just wanted to have uh, an inner and outer point of attachment, so I wanted the um, center cross member welded to the outer frame the frame rail itself and then i wanted it welded to the boxing plates so um you know you can you can figure that out and do it the way you want to do it but uh that was my that was my way of doing things so uh happy with that uh there they are all down the side this point right here you can see that's going to take some some doing um you know, the boxing plates look like they're probably plasma cut or something, maybe laser. Um, so, you know, this is not a, not a boxing plate problem, uh, unless you consider that maybe they don't follow exactly the uh, original frame rails, but geez, that'd be a lot of, a lot of pain for a little gain, I think. So I'm, uh, I'm very happy with all of this. Uh, it's all going to have to be burned in real well and uh ground down to make it look nice but uh overall pretty fantastic um so 
I guess the next thing after the boxing plates, um, I did not run the uh, shot cross member in the back with uh, no boxing plates. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna weld that to the boxing plate and we ought to be good as light as these cars are. All right, next. I'm gonna have to put in some little, uh, like a fish plate to be able to weld to right there, which is not that big a deal. It's just kind of an irritant. Uh, everything is level, everything is in the right position. Uh, the great news is that once I get this third frame me member in, cross member, then I'll be able to pull it off the stands and start doing uh, finish welding. So all the boxing plates are pretty much on. Um, you know, I got more welded across the bottom than I do to across the top. It's tacked everywhere. It's level everywhere. It's square everywhere. There has been lasers involved. Satellites in outer space, many things. So, uh, yeah. So far, I'll say so good. Um, the only thing I might be a little concerned about, and I'll make sure that the spacing is correct before I put the um, side, whatever those are called, uh, reinforcements on the center cross member. I want to make sure that the uh, distance across the cowl is correct. Uh, that ends up being a big deal. You know, you get that out of whack and the body's not going to fit on the thing right now. We already know that a Model A doesn't exactly fit perfectly on a 32 Ford um, frame. So there are some issues. If it was a little bit narrower, I wouldn't mind that. That would save me some, uh, some time. But, you know, out of spec is out of spec. So we're going to shoot for not being out of spec. You know that point where you're not sure what to do, so you just go ahead and do it? It's kind of where I am with this, right? So the instructions for the cross member, which I got from uh, ASC, good folks over there. <clears throat> you know, it shows you where to weld it in. It says it's supposed to be welded to the boxing plates for the shock cross member. Okay, mighty fine. I can do that. So I did that, but the boxing plates, you know, if you look down there, the top of the boxing plate, no issues there. And I mean, it's, it's very close to the, to the top because the frame is upside down right now. So that's not a problem, but <clears throat> you know, the boxing plates like on the bottom side and you're right on, you can just weld them up and up here, there's a big gap. So wasn't sure what to do. Ooh, I'm not showing you anything. I wasn't sure what to, uh, what to do, so I went ahead and cut the uh, boxing plate so it would go around the, the gap down at the bottom. And then, uh, now I guess I'm just gonna, I guess I'm just gonna box the top of it with some other metal. Anybody ever run into that before? There's another step back here you know, where it's got to be kind of done the same way if I want to stay with the theme. Um, don't really know what else to do. So that's what I'm going to do. Taking a break here for a minute. Let's see what the bottom side looks like there. Oh, I had a boo-boo. So that's where the two plates are separated. And uh, I let one get a little too far in. So uh, when I welded it and then started grinding, it just didn't look right. So what do you do? Take it off, make a cut, re-weld, grind it back down again. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Overall, pretty pleased with everything here on the bottom side. I'm about to flip it over and do the top. Yeah, there's what it looks like after it's done. That's all fantastic. You know, don't be afraid to criticize your work, man. Just go, hey, this doesn't look good. I'm gonna have to do it again. It's probably worth doing it right. Uh, along the same vein, that needs to be polished out. Along the same vein, if you do it right the first time, you don't have to worry about it. All right, I got the uh, axle uh, cutouts done back here for the, uh, the notch. <clears throat> Weld it, grind it. I just used a cheap old plasma cutter. 
I swear, man, I bought that thing about 12 years ago. One of these cut 40 things over there. Fan stopped working about the first week. Thing keeps on chugging. We don't replace good equipment, or at least equipment that works. To the point where <clears throat> I can put it down and start doing suspension stuff on it, and, you know, that kind of thing. I still hadn't decided exactly what to do uh, back here. This is kind of what I came up with and it'll work. Uh, I haven't totally welded it in yet because, you know, the rails do some funny stuff on the bottom and I could tilt that out and I just hadn't made a decision on it. I think I'm gonna leave it like this <clears throat> is what I think I'm gonna do. But uh, yeah, man. Okay, that looks good. Now I get to clean stuff up.